AARP says elder financial exploitation in the U.S. amounts to more than $28 billion each year. And sadly, the majority of the losses come from people the person over 60 year old knows versus the $8 billion from stranger incidents. How do you combat all of this? You combat it with education and awareness. So today, two AARP experts are joining us, Mark Hensley and David Kirkman. We're talking fraud, scams, how to protect yourself, and we're taking your questions as well. You can text in those questions to 336-379-5775. All right, so we have Mark and David here. Um, one of the things that the attorney general just said is on the rise is the business imposter scam. Uh, Mark, let's, uh, I mean, David, let's talk about that, about what is the business imposter scam? Well, the most common form of business imposter scams is the so-called Amazon scam, where you get a message out of the blue on your phone or on your computer that there's a problem with the delivery or a problem with your account. And they want you to, to click a link and go in and enter your password for Amazon and you know, take care of the problem, address it with them. But what really happens is the scammers, that link is actually gonna install malware and spyware on your phone or on your computer. Plus they have your Amazon password and your, your, your entry keys. They have everything they need to order things on Amazon in your name. And it can be any business, uh, Best Buy, a Geek Squad scam is very popular with, with fraudsters. They get a lot of money that way. So it can be just about any business. It can also be a government government agency that's being impersonated by these scammers. Yeah, it can be like the IRS or whatever else. And they've got logos that look really good and emails and texts that sound very official. Mark, if we get any kind of text, email, phone call, and even though it sounds like it could be like the real thing, what should we do? Stop. This first thing to do is stop and think and think about, first of all, do I do business with this company? Do I have a relationship with them? And then pick up your phone and call them directly. Call the number that's on the account that you have. Do not click on any any kind of link, as Dave was mentioning, and verify that they, first of all, are a legitimate business. If it's if this like some kind of cold call, but if you know you're doing business like Amazon, you haven't ordered anything in weeks, delete it ignore it. But if you're concerned, go to the resourceful, the, the 800 number for that business, give them a call and talk to them further to see if it's true. And also banks are not going to call you. I've gotten the calls from the banks. They, they lead you to believe that they're authentic and you need to hang up and call your bank directly from your phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is one of those things where um, everyone thinks, you know, well, I'll be able to handle it and let me just fix this right away. David, isn't that kind of like the thing from the scammer that they just want to get you kind of like on edge to have to make that action? They do. They're, when they alarm you, they know they can get you to do something you normally wouldn't do if you were calm about it. And so these impending problems where your account's going to be frozen gets you to panic and you, you do things quickly instead of slowly and thoughtfully. And that's how any good scammer succeeds. So as Mark said, you need to stop and contact the business directly on a legitimate contact um, mechanism, such as their phone number or their website. Mm -hmm. Don't click whatever they're asking you to click. Okay. Um, so often, you know, we give out all kinds of numbers, whether it be the attorney general's office, the FCC, the FTC, you know, all of that kind of stuff about what you should do if you become a victim of a scam or a near victim of a scam. But Mark, you guys have like a three digit phone number that can be called that just kind of takes the guesswork out of everything. In North Carolina, we are extremely fortunate to have 211. If you dial that number 24 hours, seven days a week, a live person will answer the phone. And their operators have been trained that if you're calling about your fear of being scammed or in some kind of fraudulent situation, they will route you to the appropriate person and the appropriate organization to help you work through that situation. So just write down two, three easy numbers, which is 211. All right, gotcha. All right, so um, just recently there was a scam jam that took place. And um, David, you were part of this scam jam that was kind of like statewide and AARP North Carolina as well. For folks that want to get more information about what the scam jam is, that kind of thing, and how do they access it, what can you tell them? Well, scam jams have been offered throughout North Carolina by a host of agencies, including AARP and Attorney General's Office, Secretary of State's Office, for about 20, 25 years now. 
but they, those have been live events. Now we've got a virtual event that's just been produced and people can go on and see it at, at their leisure and learn all about the newest scams that are out there, the techniques that the scammers are employing, and the things that you can do if, if you're suspicious or if you worry that you might have done something wrong in responding to one of these scam pitches. And so this is something new and we're very excited about it at AARP and we hope everybody can take advantage of it. All right, and so we can find that on the North Carolina AARP website? You can. And you it guys just, can watch it at your leisure and listen to it and kind of like go back and forth. I mean, this is, you know, a, a stay at a time at this one point in time where you can ask questions and get information. But that virtual scam jam is something that you can watch anytime that you want um, and be able to listen back to it. Hey, Mark, I think a lot of times people just think they're the only ones who have become victims of a scam. Oh, yeah. The guilt, the shame that goes along with that is is truly something that we need to get people over that. When something happens, you may have time to actually act by calling 211, getting to the appropriate authorities, stopping that action. So yes, we need to educate people, but also make them aware that this is truly the biggest threat against people 60 and older. Okay, our scams and frauds and financial uh, exploitation. Okay, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get your question answered. The number is right there at the bottom of the screen. It's 336-379-5775. We'll be right back.